Tell me about working at Southminster from the beginning. I had the opportunity to work as the church business administrator for um, seven years, very early in the existence of Southminster. My work began in the little yellow house located at the front of the property in 1996. As you entered this house, you were greeted daily by a swarm of termites. The house was what a real estate agent would lovingly call a fixer-upper. The floor sloped downhill and every day I was never sure if I was gonna be greeted with a spider or a snake. The snake was quite an experience. Reverend Graham Wood happened to be in the office one morning and in his lovely calm voice, he asked me to take a step back from the copy machine. Then he reached down and grabbed a snake, walked to the back of the house and slung him into the grass. He walked back in like nothing had ever happened. Consequently, I was hysterical. What can you say about working with Dr. Braun? Jerry was wonderful. Working with him has to be one of the highlights of my career. He was kind, caring, and a perfectionist in the best possible way. He wanted to be sure that this church presented a professional appearance and had the newest technology and equipment available. We had a copy machine, the newest computer system available, a folding machine, and because of the massive amounts of copies we were making, we purchased a risograph. Of course, none of these things now are in existence. I was blessed to have wonderful volunteers that were in and out daily to help with a variety of tasks. Goodwill Publishing sent one of their design people over with the newest Adobe PageMaker software to help me design all the bulletins and the newsletter. With the help of Teresa Locke, I would never have made it without her. The designs were beautiful and the communication with the members and potential members were just perfect. What were some other things that set Dr. Braun apart from other worship leaders at that time? He wanted the newest technology that was out there, and Microsoft PowerPoint was in its infancy, and Jerry was determined that once we were in the new building, that the songs were gonna be presented on the big screen in the sanctuary. It was a wonderful experience learning about timing and presentation for each Sunday. We were not fortunate enough to have a team like we do today. It was just me creating and presenting that every week. We also did not have email available, as hard as that is to believe. So any communication was done with paper and phone calls. We had a phone tree system that called each member and left messages to remind them about upcoming events. Those calls were done on a regular basis to keep the members informed. The newsletter was sent out weekly and once it was designed and printed, it had to be folded and grouped by zip code to be mailed. Again, volunteers made sure that this was done every week. The little yellow house and the church office were always buzzing with people. It was wonderful. Of course, bulletins and inserts were done each week and every Friday afternoon, I would pick up my daughter, Melinda, and she would run them through the folding machine and stuff the inserts. She loved being part of the process. Do you remember specifics about when construction began? Once the construction process began for the education building and the fellowship center, the amount of money that passed through this little yellow house was absolutely overwhelming. I was sent to Gaston College to get my notary license so that the documents could be signed in the office and things made easier for the volunteers. I handled thousands of dollars a day that moved from the church's account to the multiple vendors that we were using. Oh yes, I was not only the administrative secretary, but also the financial secretary. Needless to say, each day was busy and different. Did you have any other responsibilities? I was also given the responsibility to order items for the new building once decisions were made on what to purchase. The beautiful chairs with the arms came from Merlin Simpson. He offered to pay for them as long as we ordered some with arms. That is the reason we still have some armchairs even today. Charlie Wetzel wanted to gift the church with flags as he was a World War II veteran and also the director of the History Museum in Dallas. People were anxious to be part of putting things that were important to them in the church, a lot of them with no recognition. The biggest gift was the stained glass window in the Fellowship Center. It was the most impressive thing I think I had ever seen. 
When it was installed, it came in on a crane in four huge pieces. Jerry and I stood in awe and watched each piece be installed. I remember him praying over that window. You could feel the presence of God with every item that was brought in. After working in the Yellow House for some time, the church members decided that our offices would be really lovely and comfortable. I was so excited to pick out furniture for my office. A big computer desk, a lovely upholstered chair, a regular desk chair, and a floor that was level. Thank you so much for sharing your memories with us. I love the years that I spent in the office here and have to admit it was my favorite job. Though I was not a member of the congregation until a year ago, my family and I always felt included in everything that was going on. Thank you for allowing my life and my faith to grow at Southminster.